Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I built the neck for this build. So I'm going to split this into 12 sections and starting out with is the wood preparation. So I mentioned previously that um, the main woods for this neck is black walnut and maple. So I need to start by cutting the pieces to the rough dimensions I needed for the blank. Um, and I did this all with a handsaw. Following that I needed to make sure each piece was perfectly square before going on to the gluing process. Um, I also had to prepare the fretboard, um, piece of zero code two that I showed earlier. And I just did a few little trims, got the rough dimensions. It was already pretty close, but um, the piece actually developed a bit of a twist in it and being such a dense material, it was quite tough planing down to, um, to get a really flat surface to then glue onto the neck blank later on. So in order to get the, uh, the maple piece that I cut out perfectly square, I started by getting one flat edge um, by hot gluing the entire blank to uh, a board of MDF, just so I had a flat level surface to work with. Um, I ran that through a thickness planer um, just to joint that edge. And then after cutting, I could use that flipped over to give me a perfectly even square piece for the uh, center of the neck. All I ever wanted was you, but you left me alone inside these... So after those pieces were all prepared, I glued that neck blank all together. I left that to cure overnight and then came back and made sure it was all perfectly square and consistent across the length. step was the truss rod cavity. So the way I went about this um, was by using a bushing and a um, router template. Um, and I did this on a Facebook live stream so I've got a little bit of that footage here just clipped up. Um, so I then um, cut the angle for the headstock, which was um, one of the first jobs after making the neck blank. Um, and I did that just by measuring out and cutting out with a handsaw, um, relatively straightforward. next job was to profile the neck. So I glued down with Martin Tame Super Glue the um, neck template that I made. Also off camera I glued on some extra bits of maple just for those headstock wings. Um, very straightforward job again. So it was around this stage that I went back to the headstock and I made sure it was perfectly flat and then took my headstock template, uh, stuck that down. After cutting away the excess, I was then able to follow that around with the um, router and get my rough headstock shape.
So then finally came the big job of the fretboard glue up and there was one extra step for me because I'd chosen to use a spoke wheel truss rod which personally I think is such a luxury in that you don't have to take off strings or move them around in order to, to access and adjust it. Um, I don't think it looks pretty cool as well, it gives you a nice looking uh, clean headstock. But um, one of the things I had to do in order to keep the truss rod the way up that lets the wheel stick out the highest um, was take some material out of the bottom of the fretboard so that it will slot on top. And I managed to do that quite happily actually just using a, um, a guide sort of jig stuck down onto the fretboard with a bushing again and sort of bullnose route a bit. So then when I did the fretboard glow up the first time around it actually wasn't staying stuck down and part of that was um, that the wood had moved a little bit in the time before I got to glue it up, uh, partially the glue I was using was just no good. So um, after a bit more cleaning up and a bunch of time invested into uh, planing down the fretboard. I then glued it up with Type 1 2 and it was perfect uh, after a night securing. And then using the bottom bearing route a bit, um, after I'd cut off the bulk of the excess of the fretboard, I could then follow along the neck profile and clean that up. So at around that point in the build, I decided to make the um, small headstock veneer that I wanted. I, um, I really, really like the look of the exposed multi-laminate wood. However, I felt like to just add an extra accent, 
I wanted, originally I was thinking of using a piece of zero curvature from the fretboard, um, some scrap from there, but I didn't have any big offcuts, so I chose a small piece of flame maple I had um, from a previous build, and I printed out my logo and carved that into the small piece, and then after making a small template um, and carving the piece, planing it down to almost the right thickness, I was able to glue that in. Um, and before doing so, with the logo, obviously, as I mentioned, I carved that just using a sharp scalpel and a bunch of patience. Um, I didn't have any perfect small chisels or anything, or I didn't use a Dremel either. Um, but I think the results were quite good. And at this stage, I filled it with one color of uh, dark blue epoxy resin. And then I was a bit anxious because I felt as though um, if I didn't get the thickness perfect, once I stuck it to the head stop, it would be playing down a little bit further and I might start to lose some of the defining uh, definition on the edges of it. But I felt confident enough that that process went smoothly the first time. I could come back, touch it up and add a second color um, to really make it pop and sort of fit in with the um, within the fit in with the build better and the um, multiple colours. So I was really pleased with how that looked at this stage. So after the fretboard was to the right dimensions um, and thickness correctly, brought down to about 6.5 millimeters, I could then go on to radiusing. And I started out by just planing the edges gently to bring it slowly closer to the 12 inch radius curve that I wanted. Um, and then I took my radius block with um, quite an aggressive 60 grit sandpaper to start out with. And this is a slow process, but um, eventually after um, checking, marking it with pencil and going back I went through a bunch of sandpaper, as you can see, but um, yeah, eventually you get a perfect 12 inch radius across the board. And as long as you measure each side and um, just kind of keep checking with calipers or with a, a steel rule, you'll um, then have your perfect fretboard. So this leads on to one of the most important parts of the guitar build full stop, which is the frets and the fretting process. So in order to cut the fret slots, I actually built a small little jig and I used some uh, pieces of plywood and, and scrap that I had. Um, and this allowed me to keep the blade that I was using perfectly straight so that um, the, the fret slots would be perfectly straight, square with the um, center line and also um, help me keep the movement of the blade from uh, wandering or giving any bends or anything um, and keep the, you know, the depth perfect everything like that. Actually there's one other little detail I've got to mention which is how I line up the jig with the fret slot so what I've actually done is I've drilled holes in the top um, and if I put something through the middle and line that up underneath with, with the fret um, scribed line then I also have these holes that I can look through and check that that's resting straight on the line so I'll try to get a close-up for you
worked really well. Uh, I felt pretty confident about that whole fret cutting process, fret slot cutting process. Um, and then the next thing I went on to was all the fret markers and side dots. So I'd chosen, in keeping with the build, to use coloured epoxy for all of the fret markers. Um, and I felt like the offset um, dots is kind of the best look and what was most um, practical for this build. So I started with a um, bright green at 6mm for all of the fret markers and I came back later with a 3mm drill um, and poured in a dark teal blue uh, in the center of each of those fret markers and for the side dots I followed just a similar process. Now, once the fretboard was ready, um, I could then go on to install the frets. However, before doing so, I needed to prepare all the frets. Because I decided I didn't want the tangs exposed at the end of, edge of the edge of the fretboard, I had to clip those down. But unfortunately, the um, cutting pliers that I had are not flush on the edges, and I don't have access to a grinder or anything, and I had no luck. Um, uh, flattening the uh, hardened steel. So what I chose to do was very laboriously clip the frets to the right length and then clip just a tiny bit of that excess fret end away with the fret end cutters or the clippers that I have and then spend probably close to a little over an hour just filing away at that stainless steel um, so that the fret ends wouldn't be exposed and for me part of the reasoning was the look um, because then I'd come back later and fill it with dust which matches the fretboard better but also um, another reason for me was that in the long term I envisioned that the wood tends to move more than the stainless steel would and I don't like the idea that the edges of those frets, the, the sharp ends of the tangs could, as the wood moves or wears away, become exposed and become uncomfortable to play on at any point. So I went that extra mile there and I think it, it pays off in the end. Um, so I then went on to install the frets and I have a fret press call and no actual press uh, at this stage I don't have a drill press to use however um, I realized that just hammering the call was sufficient and I chose to use a bit of tight bond glue in the slots just to keep the frets really secure um, making sure to keep the glue away from the ends where I was going to come back later and fill those spots So then once all the frets were installed, I, as mentioned before, chose to come back and I actually sanded different pieces of the fretboard scraps to give me three different um, colors of dust 
to try and match the part of the slot best. So I had that really light colored sapwood in some areas, um, kind of a more browny mix in certain areas and then a much darker color. I actually had some ebony dust as well, which I mixed in to help me get closer to that dark, uh, almost black color in certain spots. And with some super thin super glue, I um, just had to spend a bit of time keep going back and uh, tidying that up. Uh, at this stage, I still need to give that a final perfect level sand, but I'm going to be buying a leveling beam shortly to do that with. Uh, so I'll just take a quick moment here to mention, um, as I've alluded to before, I have a bit of a weird selection of tools at the moment. And I am trying to get everything I need to smooth out this process so that each guitar I build going forward is going to be a little bit more straightforward, less full of uh, complications. Um, but I'm very lucky because I've been lent quite a lot of very, very useful tools. Big thanks to those people in particular. So with the frets installed, I also wanted to just briefly address the ends of those frets. Um, so that they weren't going to be sharp and annoying while I tried to do any, any other jobs. Um, so I just came along with my cheek file and slowly ground down those edges carefully, carefully to avoid damaging the neck in any way, shape or form. Um, and just putting a slight bevel on there all along the edge of the fretboard. So once that process was all done, I could then go on to carving the neck. Now, at this stage, I still had a really chunky blank because I kept that square edge, um, as mentioned earlier, in order to help me guide my fret slots uh, and so that I had a more sturdy support in order to put the frets in. So, this was quite a challenge because I don't have access to any powerful saws of any shape or form. So I had to cut it all, all out by hand and I worked out that just by measuring out a few lines in certain spots and then carving out some of the excess with the Shinto saw rasp, I could kind of gain access to that long cut and then make that cut as well with the hand saw. And I cut with quite a bit of room to spare um, so I had an extra four or five mils to um, surface out of the back of the neck to get that flat, perfectly flat. Um, and I just did that with a, a saw rasp as well. Uh, I tried using a um, spoke shave to sort of clean that up a bit and that was quite helpful too. Um, so with my square neck ready, I could then go on to I could then go on to carving the actual shape of the neck and the method that I've been taught and that um, has worked extremely well for me in the past as well taught by Crimson um, is to measure out facets and then just take those down one by one with the Shinto saw rasp which is such an ex excellent tool I mean there's nothing that really compares at taking material away from very hard, dense woods. So you can see here, step by step, I'm measuring out my facets um, and dividing those up and then just carving away with the saw rasp. And eventually this will give me close to the final neck shape. Um, I ended up going slightly thinner than I originally planned. I wanted to go quite close to the original sort of fender spec, uh, which is in the realm of 21 mil thickness at the first fret and closer to 23 at the 12th. Uh, I went just a fraction short, thinner than that. And then to blend it all together, uh, just had to come along with some, um, some sandpaper. So there you have it. And there are a few more steps left. I, I need to carve with the loop for starters. Um, I have a bit more tidying up to do and I'll just need to trim up things a little bit more as well. Um, get it to exactly the right thickness for my body joint, all sorts. Um, 
But anyway, at this stage, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been watching my build. Uh, there's several hundred people at this stage um, who have been watching the videos, and the vast majority of you I know are just absolute strangers. So <laughs> thank you so much for uh, joining me on this adventure. And uh, for those of you who are competing as well in the Great Guitar Build-Off, I wish you all the best of luck. I really enjoy looking at your builds as well. I've spent so much time diving in and finding further inspiration. So um, thank you guys and big shout out to all my friends and family who've been supportive so far. And I will catch you guys hopefully in the very near future with some more progression on this build. Ciao, take care.